The next session is going to be called Creating Free Palestine Through Song, Dance, and Stories from the Diaspora, exploring the work of artists including Electra Debki Band, 47 Soul, musical theater writer Fouad Dakwar, songwriter Naima Shaloub, and more. Um, and I'm joined here by my wonderful co-moderator, uh, JJ Alfar. Welcome, JJ. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, friends. How are we? I know how we are, some of us. We're okay. Hello, everybody. I'm JJ Alfar uh, coming to you from Philadelphia. We are um, excited to be part of this next conversation. And uh, Kate and I have put together a really incredible lineup of artists, musical, dance, theater artists that I think have something to say to this moment. I'm excited to talk to them. Hopefully you can join us. Thanks, JJ. Um, yes, we're going to be we're going to be uh, engaging this great group of artists. Uh, they're gaining popularity not just in the Arab world but beyond in the in the diasporic communities, which is really crucial. Um, and yeah, we're so excited to to have some performances with them and and chat with them. Um, I'm wondering. I see Naima there on the screen, and then we're just I think waiting for Fuad, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Yeah, Fouad was having some trouble with his um, uh, microphone. We were troubleshooting that a moment ago. And so I think he might need a moment to figure that out. Uh, <laughs> but in the meantime, I would love to... Oh, he's here. Hey, is here. everybody. How's it going? Hey. Good, good. <laughs> we got the audio all worked out. <gasps> Yay! Awesome. Woo! Well, let me double check. You can hear this? Yes! <laughs> sounds amazing. It sounds so good. Can you also, all hear so good me okay? Yes. Fantastic. Okay, can you hear me? Great. I knew you could do it. I had every confidence in you. And this is that, the waiting room, right? We're not no, live we're right here. now? We are live. Oh, oh hello. It's... Okay. Yeah, I, I totally knew that, actually. Free live Palestine. Free. <laughs> um. All right. Well, without further ado, then I'm wondering if we should go ahead and begin with our um, begin with our first uh, performance, which is going to be um, from Fuad, and then um, we'll talk a little we'll talk a little bit about each piece and uh, and um, have performance from Naima as well, and then we'll all chat a bit. Um, yeah, so Fuad, then. would you um, tell us where you are, what you're up to, and what you're going to play for us, please? Absolutely. It's so great to be with you all. And thank you for, for hosting this and putting this all together um, to the whole team uh, at HowlRound and, and all everybody else involved, Golden Thread. Uh, so I'll be performing some songs from a, a musical, actually, a musical theater piece that's called Fuad of Nazareth or Fuad of Nazareth, which is, if the title doesn't already give it away, it's a semi-autobiographical piece. It's based on a real life experience I had of revisiting my birthplace of Nazareth. I'm calling in currently from New York. I forgot to answer that sooner, but that's where I grew up. And, and the piece I'm about to share is, is sort of about the experience of revisiting my homeland in Palestine. Wow. Should I jump right in or what's, what's the... Yeah, let's hear it. All right, let's do it. So this first song is our protagonist, Fuad of Nazareth, has just landed in a, 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 an airport named after a war criminal in Tel Aviv. And when he gets there, he has to go through Israeli border patrol, which if anyone who's Arab has ever been through that experience, it's dehumanizing. There's a lot of, um, you know, it starts off with questions like, what was the name of your father? What was the name of your father's father? And, you know, the absurdest version is, what's the name of your father's 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 father, etc. And in going through that experience, especially growing up in New York, I realized it's a very similar experience to, to growing up as the only Arab in, in a you know, room of white faces and similar questions that I get asked uh, here. So that's what the song's about. Also, it's a punk musical, so I'm, I might scream at you all for a little bit. I've been through this before. Border Patrol has got nothing on the white girl from fifth period. He's trying to be an ally. Where are you really from? Trying to get to my core. It's like a bite into an onion My layers, they come in myriad And they might just make you cry Instead of where are you going, I get where are you from But how do I answer when they're holding a gun? Your diaspora's showing, you should never have come Go home, can I have more than one? Cause I've been 
been through this before I'm a Palestinian Christian But wait, there's more An Israeli citizen It's like my body's gone to war And I've been through this before I've left my home Not sure quite wherefore Could this still be mine anymore Or did I leave it at the door Instead of where are you going I get where are you from But how do I answer when they're holding a gun Here's I ask for a showing You should never have come back here Is it home that's still unclear Cause I've been through this before And I'll go through it again Yeah, here or there, I'm not sure It's more a question of when Well, welcome home Thank you. <laughs> yes. How was the sound on that? It was the it mix. It sounded it's all right. really good. So good. Imagine good. a crowd cheering. Yeah. <laughs> They're all at home doing that, obviously, probably. Hopefully. Everybody, right? everybody. No, that um, was really refreshing and fun and earnest. Absolutely. Song. That's a core it of the, the piece is using comedy, dark comedy, and, yeah. you know, joyful experiences that are part of being Palestinian but interfused with, with sort of the, the reality that creeps in. So the next part of, of the plot uh, here of Fuad of Nazareth is our protagonist gets sent off to a summer camp of all places in his homeland in Nazareth. It sounds absurd, but it is, it is a true thing that happened to me, uh, a Christian summer camp, no less. So it's one of the most American places you can imagine. And yet, you know, everyone at this camp is Palestinian. Everyone surrounding me, you know, spoke Arabic in a way that I, I could only dream of, you know, picking back up. Uh, so basically what, what our protagonist starts asking himself is what is home? What, what, what does that mean when you are physically separated from your home, um, when you're separated from it on a more political level, when your home has been colonized? And then on a more, you know, individual level too. This is a story of a kid coming of age, uh, much like anyone anywhere has, has gone through, right? So, so really this piece, is using comedy to make the Palestinian story or one version of it, as weird as mine might be, uh, accessible to, to a mainstream American audience in particular. So this next song um, is sort of the, what we call in, in musical theater, the I want song of the character. What, what is he really chasing, or in this case, running away from? Getting close to home, not quite willing to say that the day may never come. I fear it's in my DNA to search for somewhere just to roam. I sit still, then you can pray. Cause God knows where you're really from. Mom and Dad left all they know and then ran away from each other. So am I meant to be alone? Like father, like son, like his mother Here's a place I've since outgrown, right? Or could it be home for the summer? There's nothing left from where I've flown So hello and goodbye to this old newcomer I keep running away Am I getting close to home? I'll always be torn Towards where I'd be 
Thank you all so much. That's the, I got one more for you all after this. So our protagonist, Fuad of Nazareth, he arrives at this summer camp. And like I said, everyone there speaks Arabic and, and he connects to his culture in a way that he never had while living in New York. And while he's there, he goes to a uh, camp dance party. There's a, uh, a prom sort of event at this camp. It's, I, I like to call this a campy musical, literally campy. Um, so he's at this dance party oh. and he meets a girl there who mm -hmm. pronounces his name in the proper Arabic pronunciation instead of Fuad, which is what, you know, I <laughs> introduced myself as at the beginning of this. Um, and what I've gone as most of my life as Fuad, uh, with the glottal stop in there. So he he hears someone his own age for the first time saying his name the proper way. And that's what this song, this last song is about. But here they don't give a damn So maybe I can do the same Back in New York As the a big kid Went with his parents stuck at home Back in New York Another version exists His name's Fuad And he's been taking control of me Fuad, Fuad should hit the floor and do a little step game. Why, my God, why did you leave our dance across the sea? So glad I'll stop till you drop. <laughs> Back in New York, I feel I'm playing a part within a play I miss rehearse. It's like they're filming for porn and I got caught in the shot But what's the plot and will they make me take off my shirt? I sure hope not For ad, for ad, you should hit the floor and do a little depth game What my guy, why? You know you belong in NYC So glad I'll stop till you try Yeah, she knows how to say my name now And that's a pretty good start I'll glad to stop till I drop I'll glad to stop till I drop Thank you all. So the last thing I'll add, um, this was just me okay. on a guitar messing up the chords every so often. So the real show has a, a full band, um, incredible band that, that I'm excited to hopefully bring to life soon. Uh, later on in act two in particular of the show, the, 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 the characters go on a field trip to the West Bank where, you know, that's where a lot of the more, like I said, the darker reality creeps in uh, on this larger than life comedy of the show. So um, I think I'm, I'm walking this tightrope of the, the dark reality we live in where we're facing genocide as a people. Um, right. And at the same time, you know, the, the joy that comes from our rich heritage and our tradition and knowing that our artistry was here far before, you know, a, an apartheid state and will be here far after. So um, thank you all for listening. I'm very excited for the rest of the, the show here. Naomi, I think is next, but I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> Bravo, Fuad. Thank you so much. Kate, I would like to know how you and Fuad got to know each other. Where did that come from? And what has been your experience working with him on this show? Yeah, well, um, so for those who don't know, so this musical, Fuad of Nazareth, was part of um, North Theater's highlight reading series uh, this past winter. And um, my colleague, Sivan Batat, who um, is Noor's director of new work development, um, you know, is the director of the piece and sort of 
we we were very excited about it. Um, and so it was really a joy to to see the piece be part of that. Um, and also uh, we did, there was a, a really exciting, totally sold out concert of the piece that happened at Joe's Pub, um, mm -hmm. also back in um, in February. And so that was sort of my introduction to this piece. I just think it's so brilliant. I think it it just, what it does, the way that it uses humor, I think, um, and we can talk, we can talk more about that too, but um, the, the, the way that... I, woven humor and um and and music and the way that it it addresses i think something we're going to talk more about the this idea of like the diaspora um i think is 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 really really very present in the piece um so yeah that's just a little bit about it i want to for whatever it's worth add kate and the entire north theater team are phenomenal and they they produced that that joe's pub performance as well um which was a, a fundraiser for the palestine children's relief fund um and again, just in this moment, creating work as a Palestinian artist, I'm sure for all of us is um, a mind fuck. And I, I'm allowed to curse on this, right? I, yeah, <laughs> I but... already have already. Um, and and just that was something, again, we can talk mm -hmm. about. Uh, well, Ed, thank you so much. I mean, your story is, I think, very relatable <laughs> for many of us. And I love the way that you have framed it in this show that you're building. And it sounds really interesting. It sounds fresh. Um, I, I, I mean, <laughs> your diaspora is showing. <laughs> like, I'm going to take that one with me. Thank you so much. I'm going to just cherish that for a second. Um, but, you know, you, you reference other things that I think go deeper to talking sort of about, like, the repetition of violence and displacement, the the cycle of it all, um, and how it's like I've been here before, I'm going to be here again, and how that's so uh, tied up in um, this kind of shared identity of the region of like, okay, now we can't live here anymore, we have to go somewhere else, um, and so this this story that we share of coming to another place. So I think it speaks particularly to the to the aspect of being within a diaspora community um, and not of the place itself. And so that's really relatable to a lot of people, not just out of people, but like, you know, we, we, us all. Um, and I want to know the details about that Arabic Christian summer camp. I'm going to come back to you about that. A couple of children who may need to spend a summer there. Who knows? It might be two summers if they're into it. Let them go. Maybe they come back fluent and that would be great. Um, it would look really good on their college applications, let me tell you. Um, and uh, I, and I love the glottal stop till you drop, like, please, that's another, that is another gem. So you have a lot of fantastic, great references in this piece. I'm so excited to see where it goes. I'll definitely come when it opens and uh, so I, will, I will evangelize about it as well. So thank you for making it happen, your theater. Thank you for introducing us to new wonderful artists um thank you kate for getting in touch and bringing for on to our attention appreciate that um and i would like to also welcome the very quiet and mostly muted naima in my bottom left corner square you should turn your mic on girl we want to hear you now oh, i I was okay, yeah, man. I was like cheering for you. I'm in the Fuad camp for sure in terms of the name. Yes. And dude, I th I feel like we're cousins in another life because I feel very connected to you after hearing. I'm sure you get that from a lot of Arab though, but like hearing your your stories and your song. But man, I hope we can connect because I definitely want to support your work and your project. It's so dope. Yeah, and it, it made me laugh and it made me like. Oh my God, I'm tearing up already. Like this is so, I feel how deep it runs, man. And just like the humor is so refreshing. Although like my music, you'll, it's like, it tends to be heavier and more serious, but like me as a person, I'm like 90% goofy, you know? So it's just like, <laughs> it's interesting how it shows up for us differently in like music and yeah. Anyway, well, I think this whole thing could be about Fuad, but I'll just. No, thank yeah, you. We can go back to talking <laughs> I, about Fuad. <laughs> I think when any of us get asked the question, you know, how are you doing these days? We all like pause for a second and we don't know quite how to answer it. Yeah, for it's real. A question. And so in these times, 
of great emotional um, roller coastering. We need comedy and tragedy and all of it and yeah. all the full range, the full range of it. So full, um, you know, creative freedom to to showcase yeah. how we're really feeling like both in a funny way and in more touching ways, which Naima, I'm excited for you to bring us and hear your beautiful voice. Thank you. Um, can you tell us Thank about you. what you're singing for us? Yes, um, the, I'm going to be singing two songs off of my latest album, which I released a couple of years ago called Sifr, which as y'all know, zero. Um, and there's like many layers to why I named it, but I picked these two today. There's um, the first one I'm playing is, and every, every um, composition on the record is a number. So it's one through nine. So I'm going to be playing five, then four. Um, and five or the calling. Um, and I did the uh, the co-producer on the record, by the way, is eccentric. He couldn't make it today. He's a Palestinian producer, multi-instrumentalist. So he's like my co-conspirator in this project. Um, but anyway, I wrote this song, um, Five the Calling. Um, there's a music video that he shot out there too that kind of gives like a visual feeling about it. But um, this one's kind of like a a spirit it's in english um it's it's more of like a it has a spiritual feel to it in terms of like the spirituals like the traditions of like black spirituals here and i didn't even intend to do that but someone was listening to it once and they're like oh it sounds like a spiritual so it's kind of like an arabi spiritual because i'm you know arab um and uh yeah. it really has a lot to do with where we're coming from um knowing that our ancestors have our back, whatever faith you are, um, calling that in has our back. In these insane, brutal, horrific times, there's been so many people before us um, and we're here because they survived. And so, I don't know, I'll, instead of me blobbering about, um, I'll just sing the dang thing and I will I'll, like sing it for you and you can tell me what, how it sits for you. So this one's called Five, The Calling. There we go. Hello, is the levels okay? I open my eyes a little too fast. Starting to forget the dream that sung me here. I get out of bed looking for a caper trail. Of reflections that remind me of who I am. There will be a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Don't look to the right, don't look to the left. You may hear a thousand voices calling you another way, but you will know the heavenly sound calling you. Oh, 
Thank you. Wow. Gorgeous. Thanks. I think I speak for all of us when I say, God damn. Oh, thank you. Right? Um, wow. The intention of the like starting one way and, and bringing it's like coming into a new world. Like what happens when we remember what happens when we actually like with all these barriers that we have to deal with, um, mm. like what happens when we just like let go into it and just, um, the, as similar to you, Faed, like the recorded version has all these like crazy layers to it. So but anyway, thank you all for listening. Um, I'm going to switch to did car uh, guitar. Maybe I should call it Dakar. I don't know where that came from, but um, my guitar. And this one, actually, let me turn my reverb off so I don't sound like I'm in an ought to be wedding. Um, yeah, this one's called Four, and it's called Rumi at Prison Blues. Um, Tarek came up with that joke, by the way, the ought to be wedding. I props to him. He's not here. He's eccentric. Tarek, he's my music co-conspirator but um so this song was actually the lyrics i mean i've been um singing it at a lot of protests and demonstrations it was actually written in rumia prison in lubnan and i got to go in with this incredible woman zaina dakash um and she's been doing she's been doing theater work catharsis i don't know if you all have heard of her work in lubnan so i got to go inside with her um into one of her groups and spend like two to three hours with around 50 men there and we were talking about music and i had my guitar and um we actually wrote these lyrics so it's like an adobe blues um lyrics are from them and i sing it all the time now with their permission it was on my album um, with their permission to actually uh my a lot of my work up to this point has been around abolition and ending mass incarceration and that includes a lens for Palestine, which never gets included in, included in that conversation like well if we want to end mass incarceration in this country that also includes the mass incarceration of Gaza and of Palestine because it's all the same dollars and you know every you know I could go on and on with that so anyway um yeah this song is about Rumia prison and this song is sung to the prison doors but I've throughout the song will replace Rumia with Gaza or Palestine um because the the the, the prison theme is so like true unfortunately um as it continues to have like be a the open air the largest open air prison and we hope that ends of course like today um. Okay, back to that Abby wedding sound with the reverb and can you all hear my guitar? Okay, cool. So this is number four on the record. Yellow sheen in your bash. What's the 
سين صعبي يفتح الباب رديت لروحي والسكير والسكير Thank you all. Wow. Famous, thank you so much. I am blown away by your talent. I'm blown oh, away by your originality. Here we are having two totally different styles that we've barely yeah. ever heard, if ever. Punk, musical, and out of blues. Like, <laughs> you made it sound as if the letter H is like made for the blues. Like you were like <laughs> you felt so right, you know. It was like ah like you. It was built into the feeling <sighs> of the song. It, we, we were all feeling it with you. It was so good. Oh man, but you were giving Thank us you. Nora Jones, Adina mm -hmm. Menzel, Fiona mm -hmm. Apple. You were giving us all these flavors and like the full scope of the emotional roller coaster that we live with daily. Um, I love the way Thank that you're you so using like minor keys, but completely different ways. You know, obviously the blues is in a minor key, but you're not, even though you're playing traditional blues progressions, you're completely innovating the way that the, um, the phrasing of the lyrics goes with the, the, the underlying um, melody and score. So I love the way that you're playing with that. I noticed the difference that you're trying to make with it. It's very intentional. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate what you're doing and, uh, it's exciting. Thank you, it you. Thank you so much. I would love to hear more too, if you'd be willing to share about the process of, you shared a bit at the beginning, but the process of, of writing this, this, this song and what that, what that was like and how sort of the, how, yes, how, mm -hmm. how you married this, this melody to the, to the words and yeah, I'd be so curious. Oh, Wow. That's a good question. Um, so we were, you know, I was in the prison in this room, in this like large room where Zaina does her groups and we were talking about um, resistance and I was talking about, you know, I'm a Lebanese American and a big part of being a musician is like you can't not be affected by black music, right? The black music tradition rooted in the blues, rooted in resistance and the blues even has its echoes to Mali, right? And then there's that little Arabi, Mali, African, right? So it's just like there. So, um, huh? Talk about it. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yes. So, um, so we were talking about, um, the root of the blues, right. And black music, but then as being Arab, right. Our own resistance music. And so, um, they're kind of shouting out different like blues artists in the American sense that they know of. So that, you know, they were like shouting out names. And then, um, I was like, well, why don't we write a blues? And so, we, they wrote lyrics on these big, I still have the poster board somewhere. They wrote the lyrics and then I kind of was sounding out the melody. And then um, we just figured it out together. It was really, really powerful um, and really, really beautiful moment for me. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so inspired by the yeah the the as you said JJ sort of the 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 variety of musical styles and the beautiful ways that they're melding on this on this uh, in in this group and so thank you thank you both I'm just yeah yeah blown away um, I feel like we need all kinds of sounds and all kinds of ways to really uplift Palestine you know and not like the one way or there's like a one way you know and I I don't know. If, you all like I just are full I'd be curious that's why I'm just so like ah I just want to like I can't wait to hear this whole project because if you don't mind me asking like it's just the ways in which being Arab American or I'm Lebanese American I'm not Palestinian American but like I felt as a musician it took me forever as an artist to feel like oh yeah I can jump out of the box like I don't have to be an Arabi singer or this like no it's like you you're like I like punk and your voice is incredible by the way Yep. Um, and I don't know, like JJ, your your uh, um, your story too, with like how you created your. But like, it took me a while to just be like, I'm just gonna play and sing what comes through me, not in these like boxes that I'm expected to. But that was such a journey for me. And mm -hmm. anyway, like 
for, I feel like for Palestine, like it's just it's like we're weaving this culture that is now being recognized by the mainstream, by the dominant, and it, it's been forever. And so it's just like, yeah, punk music. Yes, this. Yes, that. Yes, that. Because that's what we need for, you know, anyway. Yeah. So it's important to note, just as like for historical context, that we are speaking at 6.36 p.m. on Saturday, July 20th, at the exact same time that Habibi Festival is happening in Prospect Park. I'm going right after this. Part of the Celebrate Brooklyn Festival, which is a big deal. That's a really wow. big deal. And there's like amazing oh. artists had like, like it's an insane lineup, A. I like reserve tickets and thinking maybe I would just get on a midnight bus and just like get there in some crazy fit of energy, but it didn't happen. So here I am. And so that's happening. A B Omar Effendum was just at Joe's pub, had an amazing show. I had sources who told me who were there. They were like, this is groundbreaking. He's doing stuff with hip hop. He's doing stuff with the Syrian narrative. He's introducing us yeah. to characters that we haven't, heard before so right. that also just happened okay and like this is all going on right now i mean wow. on this call i think uh, uh we had catherine corey from nyu who's been uh, a big proponent of bringing together arab artists for a very long time and she's just like the champion of it uh her series called in the same room has literally brought together many, many artists over the years who have been introduced to each other's work for the, you know, main value of just knowing about each other and being inspired. Mm. Um, so there is always value to that. And there's always value to understanding how we sit and how our work corresponds um, to other people's in and around right. the diaspora. Um, as we like make sense of this, this weird, like neither nor identity where I'm in like all these DEI conversations. I don't know if you guys are in DEI conversations and you're like, Oh, yeah. What do we do with me, folks? You know, and they're like, sometimes they don't know, especially if you're the yeah. only. One. So we've all been there at one point or another. And I love that your expressions are filling up that um, that emptiness that, that some people, you know, might have when they think of what it means to be out of American. They don't have a sense of what that is. And you're giving us so many different authentic, original perspectives. So thank you. Um. I think we have, uh, you know, about 20 minutes left in our chat, Kate. Am I right? Yep, you're right. So mm -hmm. do you want to talk a little bit about what's next? I was going to ask, yeah, actually, JJ, if you if you wanted to speak, I know you were, you had in our, you know, conversations or emails preparing for this had talked a little bit about um, 47 Soul. And I'm curious if you would be interested in sharing a little bit about, about, yeah yeah their work and how that all fits into this conversation because i feel i feel like it does and i'm i'm interested and excited to bring that into the space as well thanks um i was trying my best to get one of them to join me tonight but they are on tour in canada and mm. they're about to play um vancouver and then calgary and then toronto and i am going to that toronto show so if there's anybody out there who seen this, sees this <laughs> before the 30th of July, they're in Toronto on July 30th, and I'll meet you there. Um, this is a group that I came to know through my friend Wala Spate, who I went to college with at Brandeis University. Um, and Brandeis was founded in 1948 by the Jewish community as the um, university where really brilliant Jewish scholars could go when they were rejected from top universities because of a Jewish program. And so it was set up as a non-sectarian private university. Um, Brandeis, no one knows that, now you do. This is where I went to school. It's where I met Wala. Um, and we were both in the theater department. And then many years later, we found out through our mutual friend that we were both coincidentally in the same grad school at the same time in London. Very strange coincidence. Mm. So we secretly met up in the library and screamed silently that we had found each other. But because we were in the library, we had to like really not make it loud. He said, listen, I'm in a band. 
I said, you're in a band. That's incredible. He's like, listen, we have a show. It's in, uh, you know, it's in Camden. Come check it out. Here's the information. So I go. This show, you guys, like I've been to a lot of shows. <laughs> this show, <laughs> I have to tell you from the heart that this was one of the most transformational live performance experiences mm. I've ever had. And that's saying something. I've had a lot of live performance experiences. I've spent a lot of time doing that. Everybody in the club was dancing. Have you ever been to a wedding where like the band, the music is like really good and like you have to keep dancing? You know what I'm saying? Like that oh, yeah. kind of passion that comes out of you from nowhere. And then everybody in the club is dancing. It, it was like a performance like I've never seen that combined the music that we all know and love and, um, you know, and it uh, it combined the sounds that we were familiar with with ones that we were getting accustomed to. So uh, it felt really mm. a revelation to me at that time, which is like 2014. So we're in London. So I go back to New York. Wola and the band go on. And some years later, I was working at the British Council and attempted to bring 47 Soul to the U.S. for their debut tour. Um and we sort of had a lineup and at the very last second, we were thwarted due to visa issues. The mm. ultimate, the ultimate Palestinian, like, right. like paperwork, like, no. And it was a real sting, like for me personally, for me professionally, it all, it stung, you know, I don't mind sharing it. I, I know that they, the guys were really disappointed. They came back like a year later. They were at Global Fest. They had like a better lawyer, I think. <laughs> they were able to get it all cleared and come through finally. And and I think that was the beginning of what has become a worldwide tour of this group. And that speaks to the universality of their music. I know I'm being a tad long-winded, but I want to give you the context by which I encountered their work so that you understand why I'm talking about it now. It means something to me personally because I saw how whenever they play, their music brings together this diaspora community that may not all speak Arabic, may not all be from the right. same country, may not be the same religion, right. may not have the same upbringing, but they have commonalities with the culture and the culture is real and it connects us. And the culture is something that is ancient and happening right now too so yeah. the fact that we all have a version of Debke, the fact the fact that we all have been to a wedding and danced means that we can participate in their show and that is a an experience that brings people together and i think that it um it translates and it combines music theater and dance so it's more than just a song it's a, it's really like a show I think to to see them live. Yeah. Um, so that's why I wanted to introduce their music to you. They're um, they're recording new work, uh, new songs, and I'm excited to hear what they do next. So I'd like to play you one, if that's okay. Hopefully, my yes, please. All right. Yes, please. I mean, obviously, you can go on Spotify and do this for yourselves. But um, so they've coined this term "sham step," right? Like they kind of working with like the dub key sound, like the um, the original Mejwiz like sound of, of Arabi, Arabi music, but then also mixing in like the synthesizer and certain percussion instruments. So they're trying to kind of create their own new sound that they're calling Shem Step. So I play for you now, this is their biggest hit. It's called Intro to Shem Step. Thank you guys for just like fangirling with me. Uh, I'm a big nerd. I I mean, I think they're great. I am excited about what they're going to do next because they're doing it at a scale that is impactful. And that's cool. Um, I hope to see you guys bring your art to that level and beyond. I hope you bring it to as many people as you possibly can. Um, if I can connect you, I would try to do so. I mean, I think it's really like the theme of this whole gathering is that unity connection 
being in the same room, being on a Zoom for as long as we can stand it together is is the point. Um, that is why we're doing it. So it is for Palestine, but it is for us as well to be able to continue the work that we do in our circles respectively and uh, feel like we're giving back to that greater that greater whole, I think. Um, I would love to give you guys a chance to tell me what you think of it, honestly, and like respond a minute. Um, so Naima, I'm curious to hear your thoughts about the music and our conversation so far. 47 Soul in particular, their music? Yeah, and just like how just we're- like, yeah. This oh, how yeah. it yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's crazy because, um, gosh, a long time ago, I was in Amman and a good friend of mine, um, Nadine al Sharafa, she's a Ghazawi, she was living in Amman, and I stayed with her for like four or five days, and turns out, like, her homies is for like 47 soul. I don't even know if they were 47 soul then, or maybe they had just formed. And yeah. I remember, I don't know if Hamza is still in the band. I don't think is so. Hamza still. Oh man. Okay. Well, Not anyway, sure. it's just, it's just funny. Like I just remember having these conversations um, with a couple of them and they're like so sweet and so humble. And we were talking about just like out of music and, it's just crazy that like we're all it's like one degree of separation you know we didn't keep, keep in That's touch or anything but i'm like right it's like one degree of separation but like their music like for real what you said like i can't even add to what you said like it's so true it's so inspiring how they layered all these inspirations like who they are they just brought into the music right there's yep. like these synth sounds this like ancient sound and the way that um the arabi on top of that, like sends me chills and they throw English. Yes. It's just like, yeah. And the energy that they bring live since we've all seen them live, it's like crazy. It's so inspiring. So I wish them like all the best and I wish them zero visa issues from now and forevermore. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, I'd, I'd love to hear what you're thinking. Yeah. I mean, one thing when I first got to listen to them, uh, and it's funny because I also had one degree of separation from one of the band members as well. Um, so but, <laughs> exact. But when I, when I, not all Arabs know each other. Okay. We're not supporting <laughs> stereotypes. Um, but when I first heard them and it was similar with Mashru Neila as well, yeah, uh, yeah. it was sort of like, uh, unlocked a, 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 you know, a door for me as a diaspora kid who grew up hearing, you know, the classics of Arabic mm -hmm. music. Like just all around me um, at parties, you know, my parents listening, but it never fully felt like my own in a way because I was being raised, you know, with Western pop music in my in my ears. If you couldn't tell from what I performed, um, but when they're fused, it feels like that is the diaspora experience, mm -hmm. you know, and, and something I'm coming to terms with um, through my own writing, honestly, is that being like the diaspora kid, as much as it can feel like this alienating experience is actually like a superpower because we can do all of it you know you can like you said Nama, like like take that ancient music that's in our in our bones and in our in our you know dna um but then also adapt very easily and and to learn all kinds of different music so that's what i'm thinking right now kate do you that's think fun. that dubs are having a moment are we getting like for better or worse because of the nature of the a fucked up nature of the world are we getting a more of a spotlight now in our day-to-day -day lives and do you think that that has a direct connection to our culture that we're seeing becoming more and more available and fantastic i think so and i think there's something about that idea of of, of a superpower and that idea that you were talking about before jj of unity this idea that like we are all sort of using our you know whatever our whatever our strengths are whatever our powers are in this movement and i think it's been um you know as as horrible a moment as it is i feel like it's been powerful to see people come together in these ways especially through the arts especially through um you know looking at this event similar events um and and i think we are sort of having having this moment um culturally and in the diaspora of, of of sort of finding what is our what is our place and and how are we all sort of coalescing um so yeah definitely for sure yeah um 
I want to mention that one of the founders of Mashru Leila is going to be performing at Joe's Pub on the 31st. Hamid Sinno is going to be there um, on July 31st. So if you're interested, uh, you know, maybe some folks will meet up there. Um, I'm so encouraged by these few artists that have come out of the gate. I'm excited about Mashru Leila. I'm excited about 47 Soul. I'm excited about St. Levan. I'm excited about the visibility because numbers matter. They matter. And so all of these numbers, all of these voices, all of these different flavors and tastes of this experience do matter and they count. Um, thank you guys for sharing yours with us. This has been truly delightful. Uh, I want to just open it up if anybody has any final thoughts, but we're almost out of time here. So just kind of last couple minutes, any final things that are ringing with you? One thing popped up to what you just said. I think there's a reason that all these Arab artists recently are are being you know featured in the mainstream. I'm thinking in TV, Mo Ahmed and and Rami Youssef's work, um, and and I think it's the culture obviously reflects the people, right? And then then the ground up. And in this moment, as a Palestinian artist, there have been a lot of dead ends that I've hit, and a lot of censorship attempts that we've all seen, you know, play out in the mainstream. And yet, you know, the hopeful silver lining is that the people on the ground level are waking up to the atrocities and they're going to be seeking out art that reflects, you know, their core values. So I, and especially looking at Gen Z's numbers on, on yeah. how they see the reality of this situation. So, so that's, you know, my hopeful look at it. And maybe that's, that's where I'll end there, that that's the art we're going to all want and need in the world. Thank you, Fuad. That was really a nice way to wrap it up. Um, Kate, would you like to introduce the next session, which is coming sure. up? Sure. I just for, would just love to say thank you so much again to, for everybody for being part of this. I feel um, nurtured and bolstered by this. So thank you. Mm -hmm. And our next session mm -hmm. is, thank you. Next session is from Cars to Gaza, Armenians uh, experienced genocide in 1915 and forced displacement as recently as 23, as 2023. How does this history inform our understanding and response to the atrocities in Gaza? I'd like to welcome uh, the wonderful Tehran Jagiazarian, uh, who will be moderating this session. Welcome Tehran. Welcome Nancy, Sivan. Zach, welcome everybody. Nice to see you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, JJ. See you soon. <laughs>